Mayo be expected to win in Leitrim this weekend and win handily enough. Now, they got relegated at the weekend, of course, um, after losing to Tyrone. Not sure how much that will bother them anyway, considering they gave a fairly good performance against Tyrone the week after Batter and Galway. Now, from Leitrim's point of view, they're also getting relegated. They'll be in Division 4 next weekend. That was sealed by a 2-11 to 15 point loss to Tipperary. Uh, Stephen... To reflect on Mayo in the, in the couple of weeks, like we were, we were all very impressed after the game against Mayo. What did you, or against Galway, what did you think of the performance against Tyrone? Went well behind, but actually pushed pushed very close towards the end of the game. Well, I think we had the discussion on the show, Shane, a couple of weeks ago or last week, where we said that Galway probably weren't as bad and Mayo probably just weren't as good as the result and the scoreline suggested. And it was very evident in the first half of that game where Mayo's success came from. Now, Tyrone on the flip side, I think, caught Mayo a little bit cold. I think Mayo would have looked at the Tyrone Gunny Gall game and they would have expected Tyrone to come with a very cagey game plan, you know, maybe possibly getting a lot of bodies back early. And I think what Mayo actually done was they actually fell into the trap of of pressing Tyrone high and, and obviously trying to play a high energy game. And against the team, and I had this conversation with you, Shane, ironically, a week ago, that that will win you games but it won't win you championships. And over, you know, if you come up against a team who's really well organised, who play a very, very uh, a strong counter-attack style of football, you'll get opened up. You'll get opened up and throw and open them up and open them up rightly. And I think that what epitomised it for me was there was a still image of uh, when Roland McNamee kicked the ball under the stand to uh, Conor McKenna. Conor McKenna wins the ball. He turns, he looks up inside and he kicks the ball into Dara Canavan and Dara McCurry who are in a 2v2 situation. Completely exposed Mayo's full back line and obviously it ended up with a goal. But just about six or seven seconds before McKenna, just as McKenna receives the ball, Aidan O'Shea is tracking back and in the middle of the field he looks and you can see it very clearly. I have a still an image of it on my phone. He looks and sees the danger and does nothing about it. Now, two things would come to mind there. Either he didn't want to do anything about it, which would worry me as a manager or a coach that he didn't have the industry to actually track back, or the second more worrying thing is that they haven't been coached to do that. You know, if you if you are tracking back and you sense danger and you smell danger and you see your full back line isolated, full backs hate two things. They hate to see space and pace. And that's exactly what Tyrone got at the weekend. And Mayo were very, very naive in the way they set up. And I would say, you know, obviously this weekend will help them, Shane, because there's no, unquestionably, they'll beat Leitrim. And and I'm not being disrespectful to Leitrim in any way whatsoever because, you know, Leitrim done remarkably well last year to get to Division 3. But but really and truly, Mayo will win this game and they'll probably win it comfortably by 8, eight to 10 points. But at the same time, they need to, to really look at themselves defensively. I felt three or four years ago, Mayo probably had six defenders who could go toe-to-toe with the best in the country. And that was very evident. And that was one of the reasons why they were successful against Dublin. When you say successful, relatively successful, they probably came to within a, a you know a point or two of, of the throne in Dublin where no one else did. And I think that's because they could trust their defenders, they could back the defenders. But this is a different Mayo back six. This is an aging Mayo back six. This is a back six that probably don't have the same quality as the previous back six had a five or six years ago. And I would just be a little bit concerned for them heading into the Roscommon game. They'll get over Leitrim at the weekend, Shane. They may paper over a number of cracks there, but defensively, if they do not improve, they'll be opened up. Yeah, so in the 2012 quarterfinal, last time they met in Connacht, Mayo hammered uh, Leitrim 420 to 10 points. And over the last five years, like Leitrim... Their average defeat to Galway and Roscommon has been over 13 points. So it's no surprise that Mayo are 50 to 1 on. But just in terms of that, that defence that you've talked about there, how good they were one on one for a number of years and how close they came to Dublin. What do you make of some of these newer players? Oshin Mullen has been in cornerback. We've seen Omar McLaughlin on the wing. And even the fact that Lee Keegan is playing cornerback rather than halfback, where both himself and you know Paddy Durkin for the last number of years, you can trust them to be arguably the best half-back combination in the country. Now, Gavin White and Paul Murphy might have something to say about that, and Jack McCaffrey and James McCarthy or whoever else for Dublin uh, before that. But uh, what do you make of the new players for Mayo back there? And also, why is Keegan back cornerback? Well, I'm just looking at the team here as, as we speak, and it's an interesting one playing Keegan. Obviously, the only man who can answer that question is James Horne. Mm. You know, why is he playing there? But Lee Keegan is actually tailor-made for me he actually could be at this stage of his career he could be the one who could actually play that plus one chain so most teams will give you a man now okay most teams will bring a man out or they'll try and leave four up and you know they'll pull men back so if most teams pull men back what they do is they create a sweeper for you 
So Keegan, for me, is actually the ideal man to sit in there in front of your full back line, dictate things, use his experience, use his physicality, use his know-how, sweep across. And the thing about a sweeper is, and it's not so much a sweeper, because sweeper can be a negative word. You know, if you've got plus one in there, he should also be trying to pose trouble going the other way. Because, you know, a little bit like your your AKA, your Ryan McHugh from, from Donegal or your McGeary from Tyrone, who who, yes, will do their job defensively, but will also cause teams serious problems going the other way. And it's an interesting one. The biggest one for me is Kevin McLaughlin at six. Like, I, I, I could never... I watched Kevin McLaughlin playing football, and maybe he's got to the stage now where, Shane, he, he maybe can't do it anymore, but Kevin McLaughlin a number of years ago was one of the best in, industrious wing forwards that was in the game. You know, he, he played a very specific role for Mayo at 10 and 12, and I thought he was outstanding. And I just don't know if six suits him. I, I don't know if it suits him, you know, and I'm, I'd be concerned about that. But unquestionably, there, there is no there doesn't seem to be any identifiable reason why they're playing Keegan at cornerback. And if they are going to play him at cornerback, I would be working on utilising him in front of that back two and trying to create that plus one with, with him maybe dictating matters, you know? Yeah. And, like, looking at the, the, the kickouts last week between Mayo and Tyrone, like Colin Trainer, who we spoke about in one of the other videos, he, he showed how Tyrone's kickouts malfunctioned against Mayo in the second half, and I'll put them up here. Uh, he just wrote with the uh, pitch map there. Tyrone's kick out badly malfunctioned in the second half of the win over Mayo. Eight points up at half time, and Tyrone were hanging on at the end for the victory. Here are Tyrone's second half kickouts only retained eight of 17, scoring all three for them, but Mayo scored all four from the nine that they won. So, w- what is it that Mayo are doing that's, that, that unsettled Tyrone? Well, in the first half, I don't know if you noticed, but there was an identifiable breeze at the game, Shane, in the first half, favouring Tyrone. And what you find when Niall Morgan was, there were he was bobbing a lot of, of kickouts over the top of the cordon, and it actually created a number of scoring chances for them. Mayo dropped off a few as well. Morgan got a few cheap ones away. But Niall is actually very, very good at disguising short ones too. He's a brave goalkeeper, and I don't mean brave as in diving on someone's boots. He'll not phase him to try and chance a, a, a cheeky one in between a tight pressing line. And, and that's key for me for a goalkeeper. You know, you have to do that. But in the second half with the breeze, Mayo probably went a little bit more aggressive with their press. And Tyrone's outball at the minute seems to be a long kick out to Conor McKenna. You know, it seems to be a long outball where they try and isolate him on one side and they obviously try and kick because Tyrone don't possess an enormous amount of physicality or height across their middle third. So that would be my only worry for Tyrone's perspective. But from Mayo's perspective, the press they put on in the first half against Galway and the press they put on in the second half against Tyrone would give you great confidence and great hope moving forward in the latter stages of the championship that they could contest. But then on the, on the flip side of it too, Shane, I was wild impressed over Common on both sets of kickouts at the weekend too as well. I was impressed over Common's physicality against Cavan. So moving forward, you know, it, it, it might work against the Tyrone who, like the Galway, the Galway thing was more naivety for me from the goalkeeper's perspective but, but again Tyrone it was more a physical thing you know that Mayo had that size had that physicality and they could impose themselves on Tyrone's kick out but moving forward I think yes the press will work but it'll not work every time and they were found out a few times in the first half Shane when, when Tyrone went over the top of them but I'm not sure if in Connacht they'll get found out as much as that but if they're if they're fortunate enough and they play well enough and they get out of Connacht they will be found out in the semi-final there's no question about that Killian O'Connor missed that Tyrone game due to injury and we're not sure if he's going to play this weekend. Obviously, he's the, the highest scorer in the history of the championship and his free taking has been largely excellent over the years. But are they a better player? Are they a better team with him in the inside line or not? Tommy Conroy is really impressed and Darren Cohen hit some lo- lovely scores at the weekend. They do have some nice forwards there, but are they better with him in it or out of that inside forward line? Yeah, no, I, I think O'Connor's a class footballer. She and me... Conroy has Conroy has produced the goods. I think he scored one three at the weekend against Tyrone. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he, he has. I think he was highlighted on the, on the Sunday game as well for his performances. You know, and Darren Cohen as well. He he obviously kicked three frees at the weekend. But listen, Killian O'Connor is such an important player for them. He's a brilliant footballer. He's a class footballer. My only little doubt about him is that real real pressure free kicks in the past haven't been nailed. Haven't been nailed, and that's my only question mark that remains over him. You know that, you know, in the past, some of those real key free kicks, particularly in all hundred finals, and don't get me wrong, you know, it's not an easy situation for any player to be in late in a game where you're having a kick to decide a, a championship or all Ireland. But that separates the real high quality footballer. And I think back to an iconic moment in two thousand and five All Ireland semi final between Tyrone and Armagh, and it's it's one of the famous moments that it came up on the big screen in Crow Park where Muggsy had the ball in his hands. And he says, do you want me to take it? I don't mind. And Canavan just walked across this 
give me the ball, son, you know, and he took the free and put it over and Tyrone won the game by a point and that's experience, that's class, you know, that that separates the really, really top, top, top performers from those who are really good but maybe just aren't at the very top, you know, but listen, there's unquestionably Shane, a Mayo team with Kelly O'Connor in it is a much better team with him, with, with him in it than without him.